Hey everybody, Matt here at the Eastwood Garage doing another live tech session. Happy Sea Monkey Day. Uh, we are talking about Break Gray today. Uh, and we're going to do a little Q&A on it and show you a little bit about it. So if you guys haven't, wanna, haven't watched one of these before, we try to make them pretty interactive. So we want you guys to log on to Facebook, YouTube. You can join in on the chat on both of those sites. Um, we have Scott over here, as always, answering the questions. Yep, so if you guys have any questions, make sure you shoot them over to me, uh, Facebook or on YouTube. We'll be able to uh, answer them there, or I can always shoot them over to Matt, and he can answer them live in the video. So what are we talking about today, Matt? We're talking about dipping some uh, parts in brake fluid? Yeah, so one of my favorite products that we have as far as our uh, paints and coatings go um, is our brake gray. Um, brake gray is a pretty, pretty incredible coating that we offer. Um, and is definitely necessary in all brake parts that you use. So uh, brake gray is pretty interesting. It's, it's important, number one, so that your master cylinder doesn't um, turn out like this guy here. So if you I'll turn it so it's not in all the graphics. There we go. Cool. Um, good. So if you get a master cylinder brand new right from the auto parts store, um, it comes basically bare metal. Um, it may have a slight oil or coating on it. Um, but you, you know, you of course want to take that off. Um, and if you just leave the master cylinder alone um, or the brake part alone, it's going to turn out like this after a short period of time. Uh, just the moisture in the air um, and from driving it and the heating and cooling in the engine bay, um, it's going to it's going to flash rust pretty quickly and, and start looking like that. Which if you have a nice clean engine bay, um, that's not very good. Um, so what you a lot of times we found over the years is that people were. Uh, just spraying some kind of spray paint, anything they could find on their brake parts, just to stop it from rusting. But what happens is if you happen to, if it's a master cylinder, you happen to fill your master cylinder fluid or top it off, you drip a little bit on there, or maybe you have a tiny bit, a little bit of a leak when you first start bleeding your brakes, you're going to brake fluid on it and it just eats away at uh, just normal traditional aerosol paint. Um, so we came up with a brake gray paint that is resistant to brake fluid. Um, we put out a video years ago, we kind of did some torture testing and I decided to recreate it. So what I've done, we have a, we have a nice shot here, is we uh, sprayed it with two different types of paint. Um, and you can see we're spraying with the brake gray. And then we uh, followed up with spraying with just the normal uh, aerosol paint that you would buy at you know, a, a department store or something like that. And I dipped them both last night into brake fluid and let them sit, uh, submerged in brake fluid. So. Now that it's sitting in the brake fluid, um, this, is, this is something that's pretty extreme, of course, uh, unless somehow something extreme is happening. Your, your master cylinder parts are probably not sitting completely submerged in, in brake fluid. Uh, this is just to show you guys how much this can withstand. Um, any type of uh, slight leaking or occasional dripping, it will have no problem whatsoever. So first of all, I'm going to show you this is the the normal store-bought paint, and I'm going to try and get Joe. I'm going to get a little closer for Joe. If you can get a shot in the fluid there. I don't know if you can get close enough to get in there, but what, what you can see is there's actually paint. I didn't even rub it with my finger or do anything yet, but there's paint uh, floating in there. How about I tilt it for you? No, no. This, I always give you like the toughest stuff. Oh, there we go. So there's actually some chunks of paint. Um, there we go. Probably hard to tell, but what happened here, and you could stay close. Again, this is pretty extreme, but what's happening is all of the paint is coming off. You can see actually this little section here in the corner. The little bit that's left on it uh, is already coming off of that. And you can see the difference in the color between the two. It's basically just completely eaten it off and I'm going to set it down here on the table. Now can you get it, are you able to see in there? All the paint that's just, there we go, great. You can see all that cloudiness in there, that's the paint just coming right off of it. So I'll dry this one off here and uh, you'll see after I dry it off, this is just the bare Master cylinder again, you can see a hard line right there where it's obvious that the paint has eaten off. I mean, I didn't even have to wipe this one because it already just kind of dissolved right into the brake fluid. So that's going to just cause the paint to just fall off or bubble um, even from a slight drip. 
So with the bright gray, again, this is pretty extreme. Um, you can see that we don't have any kind of line here. Um, we don't have the paint just coming off like we do with the other one. You can see that the color is the same. It's a little bit just because it's still wet. You know, there's a difference in color. But we can wipe that off. It's still got the coating on it, and it's completely fine, which is great. And again, this is, is very much an extreme condition. Um, I don't think you'd be dipping your master cylinder in the outside, at least. But so that's good. Once that dries up, that'll all look the same and be good to go, which is great. So, and then we'll show you the fluid here on this one, aside from a little bit of dirt that I got in the bottom of there from master cylinder. But this is the other, the other container there. You can see there's not all that silver paint floating around in there. Just a little bit of dirt in the bottom. That's probably from when we dropped one of the master cylinder or the master cylinder in there. So the, the trick behind this is that it, has a, it actually has stainless steel pigment uh, built into the formula of this that helps resist the, uh, the brake fluid, uh, which is really nice. Uh, it does withstand up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're putting this in the engine bay, you can even use this on engine parts or uh, items in your engine bay, rather, um, that may be near or underneath. So say a proportioning valve or something like that that may be underneath the master cylinder that may get brake fluid dripped on it. Uh, by coating in that, that's really good. And even if it's close to the engine, uh, it's not going to have an issue with that. So, um, but it gives you the right look that you want. The color, the color is uh, really nice, and gives you, you know, almost gives you that factory OEM look. Any questions we have while I'm? Sure. You may have covered this one. I apologize. It's hard to listen to both and yeah, answer. Yeah. Um, but I know you got the temperature, the max temperature. But did you also get uh, what the if there's a primer necessary with this product? Oh, good one. So, yeah, and we do get that question quite often uh, about the primer. Uh, we have a Q&A section on our website. Uh, I should kind of sidetrack a little bit. Uh, if you guys have questions about products when you're looking at a product page, um, you can scroll down on the product page, and there's a Q&A section. And uh, Scott and some of the other techs are really good at uh, going on there, and they will answer your question um, pretty quickly on there. So one of the questions we get all the time with the Break Gray is asking about priming it first. Um, kind of our standpoint is, is that because this is a a uh, product that's made to withstand a type of chemical, um, you do not want to put a primer on. You put it directly on the bare metal. Uh, the key thing is, uh, with where I've seen adhe adhesion issues, is again, when you buy a master cylinder or a brake part brand new from the auto parts store, it's usually coated in um, assembly lube or, or brake fluid or grease or something, some sort of, sort of film. When you take it out of the bag, you've got to really hose that thing off. So we always say to use our pre-paint uh, prep, and I am not shy at all about hosing it down when I'm putting it on a master cylinder or a brake part before applying brake gray. Uh, if you just spray it right over the master cylinder or, you don't, or the part and you don't clean it correctly, um, you may have adhesion issues or you may see some sort of um, rust possibly could come out underneath of it because of uh, the way that it was prepped. So no primer is necessary, but make sure you clean the heck out of it. Um, it doesn't hurt to use a scuff pad as well um, after hitting it with pre. Again, um, every little bit you can do always really helps. Any other uh, questions you have about it? Uh, those are looking like the two most important, or the, the most important ones. Um, so an another tip on these, uh, something that is kind of a misconception, I shouldn't say a misconception, just a little tip. Uh, these uh, gas resistance on this um, is, is better than a normal paint, uh, than a, just a normal aerosol paint, but it still is not, if it gets exposed to prolonged gas, um, leaking on it, uh, it's going to have a little bit of issue with, with the adhesion. So uh, if you're trying to put this on a, a carburetor or something like that, we have our, our Carbrenew and some of our products for our restoring carburetors that are much better. Uh, this is mainly designed for brake fluid in mind. So that's the key with this is that it's for brake fluid. Uh, if you try using it with something that's exposed to a lot of gas, uh, it's probably not the best product and it wouldn't withstand as good as, say, our Carbrenew or something like that. Um, so. Again, 400 degrees, uh, this holds up to uh, a stainless steel peg pigment in it that keeps it, is one of the secrets in this, that keeps it uh, from the paint falling off if it's exposed to um, brake fluid. And you can see with this thing finally drying, the tone is all kind of starting to match there. So we see a couple little spots that are still wet there, but um, no problem at all with this. And that's, again, that was dipping that overnight. Um, 
don't know if we can pull up the B-roll again for anybody that might have missed it, what we did beforehand um, with the two master stoners. So we were spraying it with our brake gray, and then we sprayed it with our uh, just off-the-shelf um, paint from the department store and dipped everything in brake fluid and let it sit basically overnight, completely submerged. Again, this is kind of extreme, ultra extreme conditions. And then we pulled it out and you can see here, I'll pull the other one next to it before we kiss you guys goodnight. And you can see, so this is the one here. You can see definite hard line where the paint is completely gone and this is just the bare metal underneath. And you can see the Eastwood Brick gray, just kind of out of the shot there. There we go. That now that the uh, it's all drying, it's even and out, and the paint's still good on it. So, any any other questions, Scott? That's all I got for today. It's a quick, easy one, but this is a product I think everybody needs to use. I think we're good. The only other one we has, only other one we had was if it comes in any other colors, and this one happens to only come in this like kind of bare steel look. Yep. Uh, but certainly, it's a great product to hold up. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I, of course, as always, give us guys any kind of ideas you have like that. If you'd like to see other colors of brake gray, hey, we'd love to hear it. And if we get enough people asking, we have the capability to do it and we can maybe make something. So uh, don't be afraid to give us a product idea or if you have a tech idea for a future broadcast, um, we'd love to hear them. You can drop it in the comments. Um, if you guys are catching us right here at the end, you can always watch these uh, recorded on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can jump onto YouTube and watch this shortly thereafter, a recorded version. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be doing a little bit of spool gun welding. So we've had a lot of requests for showing our spool gun, how to swap it over on our MIG welder, and weld aluminum with a MIG welder with the spool gun. So I'm going to uh, hook that all up for you guys. We're going to do a little bit of welding with a spool gun tomorrow. So that's all I got for today. I appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'll check you tomorrow. Thanks.